Hello, uh, I'm going to make a speech on low agricultural yields on the basis of a study made by Harry Libanstein in 1963. In my speech, I will reflect some changes in the last six years. Let me first state that most developing countries cannot make the take-off stage realize as shown in Russell development stage. So, the more they cannot develop uh, their agricultural sector and cannot integrate agriculture and industry, the more they are lagging behind development and couldn't jump up. When we analyze the past policies, we clearly see that agricultural development in many developing countries were ignored in 1960s in the expanse of industrialization. Moreover, this development approach was emphasized by a few international organizations such as World Bank, etc. Increasing agricultural yield is one of the most challenging issues for many developing countries, but it is somewhat more difficult to explain low yields per acre under cultivation. The higher density of rural population is the more limited land and capital per man is and it results in low income per head. Land and labor are the major factors if the other things are kept uh, satirist paribus. In a rational explanation, it is expected that high density of labor on the land lead to higher yields. However, productivity or per man is always contrary. In actual fact, yields per acre are not always lower in backward countries than in some advanced countries. There are three possibilities to be considered to explain higher yields under the stated circumstances emphasized by Liebenstein. These are firstly, some of the capital found in advanced agricultural countries may not be of a kind for which we can substitute labor. Secondly, advanced countries may utilize superior agricultural techniques. And the last one, on the average, the quality of cultivated land may be superior in the advanced countries. I would like to add to the fourth factor, as in advanced countries, there are no land problems uh, regarding size and consolidation. And the fifth factor could be human capital and in institutionalization. From my point of view, the last one is one of the key issues in agricultural development in developing countries. When we compare some countries just after sec Second World War, we see that uh, Germany, France, Denmark successfully passed the takeoff stage as shown in the rest of the development stage. So why some countries, Turkey, India and Pakistan did not? If we associate it with capital, we need to think opportunity cause for those countries. Let me illustrate it with an example. In the end of the 1940s, American martial aid were given to most European countries. Some countries were more successful uh, to use these funds in development. Uh, of agricultural sector. If you look at Turkey uh, situation, we see that um, the fund used in agricultural sector wouldn't be sufficient uh, to make Turkish agriculture jump up as much as other countries because the funds were mostly used purchasing tractor, uh, which were not a limitation factors at that time in Turkish agriculture sector. Instead, it would have been used for land consolidation or irrigation problems or peasants, uh, which constitute uh, more than 19% of Turkish rural population. On the other side, 
Low capital in agricultural sector is associated with low incomes on the basis of low yields. Primitive techniques may be explained by the rudimentary level of education and simultaneous lack of necessary complementary capital goods. In the last 60 years we have left, we see that these major problems resulted in mass migration to urban areas and the average age of farmers increased sharply. We are now talking smart agricultural solutions, however, many developing countries still discuss the major problems of 1960s. Climate change positively and negatively affect the agricultural yields, particularly dry land agriculture, but from previous years observations show that there are always some circles in agriculture productivity based on climate change. Some years could be better off while some sequential years worse off due to the climate change uh, factors. But the land consolidation is quite important. Levenstein indicates that the average quality of land may be inferior for two main reasons. First, because incomes are low, the margin of cultivation is uh, is carried much further in the direction of poorer land in countries where incomes are high. And this, of course, brings the average down. But the second, and the more to the point, there may be an inherent dynamic process in the utilization of the land that keeps yields low. These are the lands which are small and scattered. Uh, moreover, the peasants having low income level do not protect their land as input prices are not affordable for them into uncertain future. We would expect both manpower and capital to be shifted from less fertile lands to the new high yield lands. This shift should have the effects of eventually raising yields on that land from which the manpower was shifted and of diminishing the soil nutrients on the now more intensively utilized land. There are several possible explanations why fertility is not maintained. In the first place, putting land in fallow or taking other measures to maintain the quality of the soil decreases current yields. Increased current yields imply improved nutrition, a diminution of periodic starvation and consequent uh, diminished uh, mortality rates resulting in increased population and necessary further subdivisions of holdings. Uh, although these smaller holdings uh, yield a somewhat higher fertility than previously, there is now little room for quality maintenance measures that imply a diminution in the current yield. It is underlined by Levenstein that present needs cannot be sacrificed for the future quality. Lack of non-agricultural employment opportunities is also uh, one of the key issues in agriculture development. Liebenstein thinks that the persistence of a lack of educate non-agricultural employment opportunities lie at the very root of economic development problem. The fact that the predominant portion of labor force is engaged in agriculture and the existence of agricultural unemployment are different aspects of the same phenomenon. The existence of the exceedingly low productivity in agricultural labor suggests that the industry should create new job opportunities for those people in agricultural sector. This is best explained in the dual economy model of Arthur Lewis. With respect to role of democratic characteristic in dynamic or backwardness, there are two main central facts uh, assumed by Lebenstein. One of them, economic growth is always 
associated with population growth. And the second one, population growth always implies growth of labor force. A third related assumption, whether made explicit or implied, involves diminishing returns. Consequently, industrialization on the expense of ignoring agriculture is not an ideal policy approach for developing countries. Perhaps development stage of agriculture would be easier with Industry 4.0 or Smart Agriculture. Land consolidation and integration between agriculture and industry will likely be inevitable in the near future because of the aging rural population. Although small-scale farms are strongly suggested by international organizations nowadays, perhaps we will less likely see highly traditional peasants, behaviors, mores and tabios, uh, etc. with the socio-economic changes.